Well, howdy everyone. Welcome back. Another workshop simulator on the docket. Here we are, Miss Mabel. Grandma Mabel has something dear for us. So, hello, dear. Thank you for fixing my sewing machine. You really helped your grandma out. Oh, seeing it restored brought me back. My heart is already singing for the moment. Uh, I get to use it again. I'm sad to say I was a little overconfident with my strength and I spent most of yesterday mostly in bed. Nothing bad happened. I just overexerted myself and needed some rest. That is fine, though. Each day I'm a little better. I suppose it's time for me to listen to my words uh, from you when you were a child and be patient with myself. How's Marcy called you yet? She asked about her old till. You know, the one... The one, the, wait, you know, the one, the one that went cha-ching. You know, the one, the one that went cha-ching. Her store needs a replacement since the electronic one broke. Rotten timing with me in the health resort, but I figured you could fix it up yourself and help your mother out. I agree. There's no need to buy an entire new one just to handle clients while her own is going to be repaired. Just give her a call once you it's, it's ready and she'll um, pick it up when she has time. As to where it is, it should be in Jacob's tool shed. It's rusted and a little broken, though. Could you give it a quick look over? Your mother and I will be very happy for you. Or very happy for you to help. My lord. I'm having a hard time, ain't I? Okay, so there we go. What the fuck was that? I apologize. Oh my god. That scared me so bad. Something just dropped on the house. I think it was. A pine cone or a tree branch. I don't know, but it shook me and it shook the house and it scared the living hell out of me. I apologize for the language. I, I do not mean to do that, especially during a game like this. But oh, hey, look at this little cash register here. Love to see this. The heck was underneath it. This is fun. Now, you already know. You already know. My grandmother has one of these cash. She has multiple of these cash registers. Yes, yes, yes. She has multiple ones. And um, they're pretty cool. They're really, really fun to push the big buttons. And then cha-ching. Love it. A classic cash register. One of those that goes cha-ching when, when the till is open. Purely mechanical. It does not need any electricity to work. There we go. Cool. All right. Let's get it together. Um, this, I assume... If you tell me, I have to push... Oh, shoot, dude. I have a feeling I have to take out every single little button there is. <laughs> oh, no, dude. There's 158 pieces to this? Oh, Lord. Help me. Anyways. All right, so we have the cash register. I'm going to go ahead and I will bring you back uh, when I get this thing all cleaned up. And uh, I don't know, like... And you know what? No, I'm not going to bring you back. You're going to watch this. F that, dude. You're you're going to watch it just like me. Now, I think the the th cool thing about this game at least is um yes, it's, there, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, repetitive things, but one thing that is certain is that um it is very in detailed on how um on you know, the the disassembly and the assembly of the device that whatever we're using. So, I think it's a very cool thing to do is or a cool thing to do is make sure that we are watching the disassemble because some people are interested in that right people are people are interested in you know watching how this all disassembles and the the in the you know the ins and outs of certain items especially like this old-timey registers now when i used to work um well when i used to work where i used to work uh, we had by choice we had this was by choice we did this by choice um we had an old register. Now, it wasn't a old register like this. Um, it was an old register as in like... Um, oh, I think I need to go upside down. Yep. It was an old register that you might have probably would have seen in the uh, in the 80s or 90s. Right? Um, very, very simple. It wasn't like those fancy POS, you know, screens where you're like, you know, you got... You know this and that it was very simple you typed in the numbers like boom 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 you know hit tender hit credit whatever you you know whatever you were doing um and that was that so one of the big because i used to I, I i did the so when i first started working the first thing i got was the simple or not the simple was the easy um uh 
POS system that, you know, computer that was ran through a computer system entirely, right? And that was that Radio Shack. And uh, we had, I tell you what, dude, that system was so out of date. <laughs> uh, that system was so out of date and so freaking slow, but we had it, you know, and uh, uh, that was like the first, one of the first uh, things I learned off of was the electronic POS system. And then when I started working where uh, I, I did, um, after, you know, for like half a decade, I went from high technology POS system and I actually went backwards to uh, old school register. Yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. So I spent like, and uh, you know what? Thinking of that is like, th looking back at it now, it's like, it really, it was more work, but it was, I don't know. It was, it was good to keep my mind busier, you know? Cause like, you know, some places where you just go and like, you just scan, <laughs> you scan and, and, uh, and that was it. I guess multitasking is the better way to say it. Like I, I, I did a lot of uh, a pretty good job at multitasking. I mean, you could say that the new PO, like if you go to a grocery store, you go to a retail, whatever you is, wherever you're going to, um, you're talking to the customer, and then you, uh, you scan their item, right? You just boop, boop, boop. You know, mindless, mindless thing, right? I'm very mindless thing. However. With an old school register, what I used to use is there was no boop, boop, boop. There was no scanning. There was type the number, do, 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 type the number of the price of the item, right? Type the department number, do, 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 whatever the department number was. And then choose whether or not it was going to be paid in cash or credit, right? And then print out the receipt, you know, take the change and all that. I think those little tiny things that you would have to do back then, you know, with the whole department numbers, the whole putting in the right numbers. And there is room for error, right? There is room for error 100% uh, for uh, for me. Like, I could, if I was typing out 1995, I could absolutely, you know, for a, a price item, 1995, I could definitely do that. And then I could definitely screw it up by doing 1994. And I'd done that a couple of times. I already know. I, you know, I, I admit. Or I put a two instead of a one. You know, it's like, it's not a system where it automatically does it for you. It's something that you had to make sure that you were doing. And I made mistakes. Yeah, I made mistakes. Computer doesn't make a mistake. Believe it or not, sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Most of the time they don't. But uh, yeah, there, there was times I made mistakes, and that's just here human error. You know. But I found it way more easier, obviously, to. Um, to talk to people and scan like I did at Radio Shack than to talk to people because, you know, I'm not the type of person where I'm going to dismiss. If someone's going to talk, I'm not going to dismiss them. Absolutely not. That's just not how I roll. I did not mean to do what I just did right there. Um, so I would like to keep the conversation going. And so keeping those numbers in head and then like the hardest part, I mean, you have like imagine a retail store and imagine everything being in different department numbers. Imagine memorizing that, dude. Memorizing department numbers. Everything has their own little spot, you know, their own little department number. That was the hardest part. It took me years to memorize most of the things I did. And I still, by the end of the five years, still had no idea or still didn't have enough uh, memorization for department numbers. So, yeah. Anyways, I'll bring you guys back when we are ready to uh, paint it. Okay, so while we were, or I was washing the register, I have to say this took a little bit of time. Long time, a little bit of time. Um, If anything, maybe like 15, 20 minutes to actually wash the entire thing. So I am a little bit skeptical to kind of like throw it in the sandblasting and show you everything. I don't know. Yeah. The radius on the sandblasting is not too, too big here. So it's going to take probably just the amount of the same time as, as I did washing it. It'd be cool if, like, in the future you could, like, throw it in a machine and it just did it itself, right? But I don't think that really makes much sense now, does it? But I'm just gaming over here, dude. However, this fine touch, though, getting that nice wood coming out is looking pretty good. I don't know where the extent of how, uh, how much I'll be able to paint. Now, when I was washing the register face, like the metal parts, it had a really cool gold to it like a nice gold trim 
Now, I would hate for the game, and I'm pretty sure the game is going to make me, but going to probably have to power, or not power wash, sandblast that, uh, that nice gold trim, and then it's probably going to go chrome, and then I'm going to have to paint it. Um, and I, I'm afraid the gold that I have, because there is like a yellowish, goldish paint that I do have. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to like stand out as much as the gold trim on the cash register. If you don't know what I'm saying, uh, it's okay. But if you play this game for yourself, you know that, and you've had the register, you know the register had a really nice gold trim to it. It was like a shining kind of shiny kind of gold too. But anyways... I don't know, it looked good after I washed it. It didn't look good before, but when I was washing it, it was a nice shiny gold, so kind of wish I could have that back, but we'll see what we have going on here. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and blast this son of a gun, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, uh, about 20 minutes or so to get that done. Now we're moving on over to the, um, to the painting, but I do have to say... Uh, when I was sandblasting some of that stuff, it did not come out as chrome. So the gold actually did stay, which is very good. Now I'm kind of just curious to see what we have to paint here. Oh, my God. Oh, we have to paint the gold trim still. Oh, that's sad. I want to keep the, the nice gold trim. Can I just not paint this? Come on now. So we got the wood. We have this. We have that and this. Oh, my God. Okay, so... I, I'm really sad about this. I really wanted to leave this gold, but that's all right. All right, so I'll go ahead and paint it. I don't know what color I'm thinking about painting. Now, there is the wood. That's going to be mostly the base and the outside. And then there is the metal part. I think what I'm doing, and I said this in another episode, I'm going to keep the wood brown. And then for the metal, I really, really, really do not know. I'm going to experiment with the yellow to see if that's a dark yellow or a light yellow. And then if not, then I probably will just paint it black. Yeah, that's probably what I'll end up doing anyways. Okay, so this is all done. Got it all painted and everything. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you. So this, I don't know. I feel like this is going to look a little funky. So I did go all brown on all the wood. The gold trim, I guess the gold mechanical parts that were inside, you, you just can't uh, you can't paint them. Uh, but that's that's fine. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. You probably shouldn't since they are inside the box. I don't know if some of them are going to be sticking out or whatever. However, I did make the frame. And the frame, I actually, um, <laughs> I made black. Yeah, I did. Actually, this is a two-tone project. Well, actually, a tritone. This is a tritone project in all technicality. Um, I did all black on the frame. I did brown on the, on the wood. No, sorry. I did brown on the frame all black on the face frame of the cash register. And then for the buttons, uh, for the buttons, I actually made the gold. I guess it's not gold. It's really yellow. I made yellow. So there's, there's like yellow buttons coming out. And uh, that should be fun. <laughs> we'll see how it looks. So far, I think the wood is fine. I, I was thinking about making the wood black too. Um, and it might have gone a little bit better with the frontal frame here as you can see it's like underneath the underneath the box here frontal frame it would have kind of blended all together but i went with the wood because it kind of gives it that vintage look in a way i don't know maybe or sorry i went with the brown on the wood to make it to give it that little vintage look anyways it's going to put this all back together here oh here we go here comes the here comes the big spot yep 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 yeah, you know what? That looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually kind of happy with that. I'm really happy with that. Look at that. Got the wood finish. You got the black frame. And then you got the yellow buttons. Now, I was thinking about making the buttons black as well. But then I was like, you know what? You can't just have black a frame and black of buttons. Not with this modern. It's kind of like a modern antique -y look, right, too? Because the yellow buttons give it that little uh, pizzazz. Now, I don't know that but the word pizzazz has been around for so long for probably like it actually ha more than half a century, uh, but we don't use it a lot nowadays. Now, why is that? I love the word pizzazz, but take, take a look at this. You got the um, so for modern, you right, you got the brown wood, you got the black frame, you have that little antique and then like the yellow buttons, like the yellow buttons that kind of stand out, right? I don't know. I think that's a really good combination. I'm not even upset. Like. Thinking that I was going to go wood or brown or sorry, black on the brown wood here. Nah, 
it's fine it is just fine with the brown love it a lot actually this is probably my favorite um refurbishment we've done yeah hands down one of my favorites here it just looks so good because sometimes like like I'll, I'll like i, I kind of like <laughs> i kind of flip it on myself at the end when i reassemble these things because i i paint things and i'm like you know what they look all right but they don't look the best no extremely extremely happy with how this turned out awesome okay cool this is boring, Grandpa. All right. Can we go play ball or something? Hey, no. Your mommy put her heart into this show. We should help her set everything up. She needs us. Don't worry. This is only while the shop's getting opened. Soon she'll be able to hire some help and handle everything herself. But for now, while it's all on mommy, we should help out. But I don't get it. Mom doesn't have to work, so why? It's been a dream of hers, you know. <laughs> she always wanted to have a simple, small store so she could chat with the neighbors while they buy groceries. Oh, that's lovely. Really? Yep. And I bet she's very happy to have you here, helping her out with this dream. <sighs> Can you hand me those cabbages? Let's stack them here. Now, I think of, like, um, small-time corner grocery shops, right? Uh, excuse me, what? <laughs> uh oh. Wait, what? Okay. Anyways, um, I think of like old time grocery shops. So, like, think of like, I'm thinking like an episode of Seinfeld where they go, um, Kramer gets banned from what's his face's grocery store, but it's a nice little corner grocery store. How cool would that actually be to run? Now, thinking about it, that'd be kind of cool, right? And like if okay, it would be cool to run it if you didn't have to rely on it as a if it was a lu a luxurious asset to have in your life, that would be so fun. But if your life depended on it, maybe not so much fun. But apparently mom, uh, she had the luxury to kind of do her own thing. So this is from Lucille. Um, good morning, good sir. I work for the Illuminia, Illuminia Domestica. Museum of Lamps in Burgess, France. We collect the lamps and show a history of mankind's journey out of the darkness. I will go straight to the point. Uh, we have a real rarity on our hands. A post-Civil War era keros uh, kerosene lamp. One produced according to John Irwin's designs. We've been able, unable to pinpoint the exact factory so far. But this model, an outdoor one most likely used in marine transport, is unmistakable. We would like to have it in our American exhibit as a centerpiece, but unluckily, we've been unable to find anyone who can reliably restore it. Your services have been much recommended by a good friend who said you do the lamp justice. Yes, we will. We definitely will. And this is from Emil Bruner. Good day. I require assistance in restoring a mechanical hammer drill and a hand crank device based on a 1930s Swiss blueprint. Uh, for many years, my children used it as a toy gun. You should hear the noises it makes when it cranks. As it gathered rust and dust, but no more. It will be a gift of a fellow master craftsman. I read that. I, was, I thought we were going into something else there. A truly great guy who, while having great taste and considerable knowledge, just so happens to shun electricity. Old-fashioned yet, always reliable, just like the tool. The cranking mechanism requires complete disassembly, which I am well capable of, but hearing of your restoration on divorce, um, would like to use the occasion and make it as good as new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. All right, cool. Awesome. It's kind of cool, this game, right? Obviously, there's a routine here. There's a pattern. You know, you restore, you help grandma, and then, like, you get, like, a... a God damn, I hear, like, foot footsteps coming up on me. And then you get, like, a couple small orders, right? And you learn a little bit of history, which is neat. I have a feeling, and I'm going to be guessing, that this story is going to go through and do what it's going to do. But then, like, I think grandma's going to, like, unfortunately pass away, right? I don't know. Uh, so here we go. We have the, let's do the hand crank hammer drill. So a mechanical hammer drill operated with a crank with a solid stock. It would, or it could be used to handle surfaces too tough to pierce with any one or, or with an ordinary one. Okay, cool. Now this should be quick, right? This doesn't look too, too complicated, but of course the last time I said that, um, yeah, we took out a lot of screws. Let's see here. Nice hand. I've never actually seen one of these before. This is kind of neat. There we go. Anything else? Yep. Yep. The front. 
There we go. Looks like so far just little little pieces. All right. Oh, yep. All right. Oh, look at that thing spin. What the heck? That thing spun so. Look at it. Go. Oh, it's spinning. <laughs> That's silly. I'll do that. Oh, yep. There's the inside. Yeah. All right. Take the needle out. I guess is what it is. And then take the handle out. Put the two back here. Maybe it's a spanner. It might be a spanner right there. Yeah. Spanner. Take that out. Take that out. And then inside. Yep. Inside. Take that out. It should be spinning, I guess, because it's a hand drill. Yeah. I don't know what the dealios is. Please get in there. Okay. Take that out. Take that out. Take that out. Take that out. Take it all out. One more in there. No go there we go sorry this is like really like com not complex but like very much like like look at all the tiny pieces hey all right give me this there's only four more things we need to do i just need to grab that little son of a gun right there there we go freaking a that took a little bit of time okay cool and then take that out take that out all right cool Woo! that was little little too much i didn't need to do all that but yeah there it was all right so 17 let's go ahead and scrub this only one tray yeah i think only one tray let's go ahead and give this show off this you know since it is a little piece uh, some people can go ahead and watch me wash this down uh even with the last like cash register i had i certainly definitely um used the sponge the whole time i have not really used the the spray bottle at all um, which sucks because it's like I spent all that money and I could have saved my money to, to get better things, you know, like a big thing thing. Now my next big thing thing, speaking of big thing thing, that I'm going to go ahead and grab is I'm going to grab the paint thing, the paint thing, you know, the airbrush maybe is what it's called. I have no idea. Um, I'm not going to get the power washer. I am going to get the paint. We'll see how that goes. The, the washing machine or my, you know, the power washer station, that's going to be the last thing I get in the game probably just because like this is like obviously like i you know this could we could go for the power washer but i'll be real with you i have a feeling that it's going to operate the same as the sandblaster and it's not going to save us much time now i'm hoping and i have no idea but i'm hoping that maybe if i go for the airbrush you know the paint thing i'm hoping that something different or something changes when we paint, like maybe it'll be easier to paint. Uh, maybe we can do some designs or maybe it's just the same thing and we just kind of spray like it would be like a spray paint or something. So not really sure entirely, but uh, I guess we'll have to see. This is going to give us 55 or $60, one of the two. I know both of them are going to give us like, um, they're going to give us big money anyway. So will we have enough money to buy the airbrush or the paint? system station i don't know what it's called after this well i'm not really sure these are so tiny dude there we go there we go at least the sandblaster this should be a very quick easy job to do 100 percent. there we go wonderful I barely even like scrub it like get me in there <laughs> get me all in there dude and then zoom out and then put it zoom back in <laughs> oh my god there we go cool all right, so that's done. Let's move it on over to the sand blaster here, and let's start blasting the son of a gun. Grab this. So we do have a handle here. Um, wood handle. Probably will make it uh, brown again. Yeah, probably will make it brown. There we go. Um, and then, I don't know what else. Maybe this is the only thing. Maybe we're only going to be painting two things. Maybe the handle and then this little tiny knob, which, again, I'll probably just paint it brown. There's probably not a lot going on with this piece here. Rightfully so. There we go. I don't see myself painting like this right here. If And if I have to paint this, I don't even know what color I would paint it. I guess white, maybe? I don't know. I feel like black and... Well, actually, black wouldn't be too bad. We've used, like, primary, like primarily, like, three colors, really, in this entire kind of playthrough. We, we've used brown, obviously, for all the wood and all that. We've used black, because black is an easy color to, to use. And then we've used like yellow because that was like the only color that really went with something that didn't make it look completely ridiculous. And the yellow does kind of go with black. And don't tell me it doesn't. Because that's a bunch of lies. <laughs> I believe uh, Wiz Khalifa 
could argue that black and gold do go together or something, or black and yellow. Sorry, black and yellow do go together. When I was in high school, like that was our that was our uh, theme song. Because our so this is this is this is the the weird weirdness. So our school colors were technically black and gold. But for some reason, during, like, prep rallies and stuff, like, in football games, they played our theme song, which they played black and yellow. Like, yeah, but we represent black and gold, so why do you say black and yellow? <laughs> like, nobody, like, caught on to that? I don't know. I don't know if they still do that nowadays, because that was a long time ago, but whatever. Hey, there we go. All right, now let's go ahead and paint. This is what I want to buy. How much money am I away from? $55. Oh, we might be able to pick it up after we're done with these two items. Yeah, we probably will, actually. Yeah, so just the two knobs. Very simple, very easy. Wasn't expecting a lot from this, actually. I'm just going to go ahead and repaint them brown, and that will be really good to have. Yeah, I think that'll be just fine. Yes, yes, yes. And then we'll move on to the next thing, which is the kerosene. Kerosene, kerosene, kerosene. I might have a little bit of trouble putting this back together. Hopefully not. Not as much trouble as me dis disassembling it. There we go. Cool. All right. Let's go do it. Put it back together, Junior. <laughs> All right. There we go. Oh, put that in your hand. There we go. There we go. This is the hardest part. Getting in there. Get me in there, please. Like right there. There we go. Perfect. 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 Okay. Perfect. Go. There we go. There we go. That was the hardest part right there is like just the inside right here. These little, I guess you could say little, what, maybe lug nuts. Um, there we go. That is pretty much it, right? Nope, I got to screw that in. There we go. All this stuff should just fly in really easily. Yep, yep, yep. This thing actually does look pretty cool, though. Like, I don't know. Like, I've never seen anyone operate such thing. Now, why does that look all messed up, right? That looks all messed up. That doesn't look... Nice. It looks all rusted. Like, I've never seen someone operate such device. But it looks pretty cool, dude. Did we not paint the rest up here? What the heck is going on there? Or maybe that was a reflection. Here we go. Cool. Awesome. All right. Neat. Let's go to the next thing now, which is going to be kerosene. So, kerosene, a glass in case metallic enclosure for a kerosene fueled lamp, a classic light source from the 19th century, and onward. All right. Uh, will this be more complex than what we just got done doing? My guess, no. Definitely not, because it's only 20 items. You see, this only 20 parts. It is a pretty cool thing, though. We technically still kind of use, well, not, I don't know, kerosene. Maybe, actually, maybe, yeah, probably kerosene. Uh, but, like, you know, you go camping. You get, like, a nice propane lantern or something. Yeah, a nice one. But, you know, we still use something. Now, this is blue, and I probably will refurbish it and make it blue again. Oh, man, dude, camping. You ever go camping? Some people really despise camping. Some people really don't like camping. Now, for me personally, I like camping, uh, but I don't like camping a long time. I like camping for maybe one or two days. Like, I know people go to camping for, like, a week, and that's good, like, good for you, but that's that's not really for me. Now, I've only been to a couple of locations camping-wise. Like, And when I mean locations, I guess climate-wise, because there's like different climates that you can get into, right, uh, for camping. Some people like certain places to go and camp. But me personally, I've only been to uh, like the Redwoods. You ever, you know what the Redwoods is? You know, those big, huge trees? Yeah, actually, I've been into the backyard of where they uh, filmed. Well, I live by, I, I live close by to where they filmed... Uh, Return of the Jedi, when they go to, uh, is it Return of the Jedi? I'm pretty sure it's Return of the Jedi. When they go to, um, God, what's that planet called? The planet with the Ewoks. Endor? Is that what it is? Lord have mercy, have, have, please bless me, gosh darn it. Anyways, I live really close, not really close, well, just like an hour or two away from, uh, Endor. <laughs> I guess you could say, um, right? That's the name of the planet. The one with all the trees and stuff. Anyways, that is the Redwoods in the movies back in the 1970s. Um, 
But they filmed the movie there, and uh, that's where you, we usually go camping. We usually go camping within the redwoods and stuff, and it's really good, really fun. Um, one of the coolest things is like just the redwoods. I don't know, they're so cool. They are, they're massive. They're massive. And when we had the wildfires over here, um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but they started wrapping. Like I don't know, they started wrapping. I believe the um, redwoods. Like the trees themselves, they started wrapping them in like tin tin foil or like a space blanket to protect them. Kind of crazy. You don't believe me? Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. Kind of insane, right? Um, but yeah, that's where we go camping because there's a lot of good cabins or there's a lot of good camping sites in there. Uh, what do you like better, cabin or tenting? Uh, me personally, I like tenting. I don't really like cabining that much. I have a weird thing when it comes to that, like... You know, people sitting in or sleeping in a, a, a bed that was in a cabin. Now, I know what you're thinking. Like, hey, that's ridiculous because you go to a hotel. Right. But I don't know. I feel like it's different. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not the best. I know. But I do. I feel like it's different. I feel like the, maybe it's like a hygienic thing. I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, I knew I know housekeepers come in here and they have these big giant industrial um washing and dryer machines at a uh, hotel what the hell do they do they have in a cabin out in the woods a washboard i, I don't know you know I, <laughs> so i don't know I, I i prefer sleeping in my own tent i prefer you know and all that what do you do do you rough it do you rough it and tough it right what i mean by that do you bring your own air mattress and 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 that's not roughing it by the way i'm gonna shout that one out uh, do you bring an air mattress or do you just, you know, put a couple blankets down, have a sleeping bag and, and you know, just lay on the ground? Now, I have a lot of family that really likes to, to hike and they do like day hikes um, and they usually do day hikes and they just bring their sleeping bags on their backpacks and they just sleep out under the stars, which is awesome. But I've never done that. I usually sleep within the tent. I like the privacy of a tent, too. I do. I do like the privacy of the tent. I like to just shelter. I like listening to the wind hit the tent and things like that. That's that's all good to me. Now, it's been a few years, and I say a few years, maybe like five, six years since the last time I've been camping. My lord, that's a long time ago. Actually, it was probably more than five years ago because we didn't have Bella. Yeah, we didn't have Bella um, when we uh, went camping last. But we went camping, and we went camping on the beach. That was cool. That was the first time Danielle and I went camping on the beach. And uh, we brought Mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We brought Mercy. And listening to the ocean at night when you, um, you know, you, you're in your tent sleeping is absolutely magical. And the best part, of course, of sleeping, is, you know, um, in the tent is being able to cuddle up, right? And stay warm. And, oh, dude, Mercy is like a little, like, you know, half-mixed chihuahua thingamabobber thing. I have no idea what she is. No one knows. She's a mutt. But, um, you know, she's like no hair. So we got to keep her extra warm and she keeps us warm. And it's a good mutual agreement that we have between each other, between human and uh, and dog. So that's really fun. Yeah, I like that. Anyways, that's some good money there. Yeah, there we go. Claim that money. Claim that money. Let's see. Do we get the um the bad boy open? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, my God. Five dollars. Grandma, can you just send me five bucks? Jesus. Come on now. Come on, Grandma end the day end the day we'll see grandma here uh that is not grandma that is a pinball museum late 1960s pinball machine 1968 pinball machine oh my god i am excited for that but that's gonna come into the next episode hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you guys did and you want to see more make sure to hit that like button and i will see you guys in the next video wherever that may be and do as always take care hey.